What's going on YouTube? Landon Huffman here back with another video. We are out here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina and myself and my wife Brooke are about to make a stop at what is left of an old friend, Myrtle Beach Speedway. I haven't been out here since it was completely demolished. I believe there's still like one wall standing. So we were out here on vacation. I decided to make a trip, come by, check it out one more time before it's absolutely completely wiped out. So I'm gonna take you guys with me. We're about to pull into uh, what used to be the track entrance and uh, I'm gonna take you guys with us. Many of our racers stayed at the old sleep in, that's for sure. Uh, take a right, right up here at the car, at the, uh, yeah, right here, hospitality lane. There's actually a little museum right here, wheels of yesteryear, but I don't know exactly what all is inside it. There it sits. That used to be Myrtle Beach Speedway. So I don't know if this is considered trespassing, but we're going to turn in here and see what we can find. So we're gonna have to park right here and walk in. All right, I don't know if we'll get in trouble for this, but we're gonna park and uh, walk up here and see what's left. It's such a shame because, you know, less than two years ago, this place was still a functioning facility with tons of fans and a lot of race cars. But when they decided they were gonna demolish it, it was such a slow, painful process because they came through and just started demolishing the stands and then left the track for a while. Then they demolished a portion of the track, then left it for a while. So they never really came in and like just wiped it all out like they said they were going to. And it was supposed to be sold to developers and now it's just setting. So I don't even know if anyone has purchased the land. So basically they killed the racetrack and everything around it just for it to set here and be overgrown. So I've got some footage that I'm gonna throw into this video too from when we were here for the last ever late mile stock race at Myrtle Beach, which was uh, at the end of the summer in 2020. And it was a hell of a race. Uh, Sam Yarbrough won. We did a, there's something in this damn wood, you hear that? <laughs> we came with Windshield Deep and did a live show, like an at track, trackside live show. And I've got a bunch of footage from that, a bunch of clips. So I'll intertwine those within this video just to show you what it was, you know, less than two years ago. So you can see really the only structure left is where the flag stand was at, <clears throat> but all of this was parking. And naturally you had all your grandstands right through here. So once we get up here closer, it'll be easier to see. So it's kind of hard to tell like distance wise, but cause you don't feel like, we, you feel like it was farther forward, but I mean, that's, literally the front stretch wall right there. So this line or this road was, I think where the grandstand started. And then you walked up in here and that was where concessions and all that was. And you actually walked underneath the bleachers and then out and turned. That was where all your bleachers were which you guys will see that in the video but we'll walk up here and uh see what's left of the track but like i said i think that's literally the only standing piece left uh which is the crossover and of course the flag stand was there and all that stuff so i actually came here in 2012 to run the limited late model portion of the myrtle beach 400 and uh i practiced and qualified and then it rained it out and they basically moved it to the start of the year because Myrtle Beach 400 was always the very last race of the year for late models. And it was uh, in October. And so I never got to come back and do it um, because we were racing Hickory at the start of the season in 2013 and we just never came back and did it. And then I never got to race. So kind of sad, but part of it. crazy.
obviously you know it's tear, tore down and stuff, but it's just weird to see it like that. There's still a piece of wall in the back stretch as well. <clears throat> Wonder why they just left this. I mean, it's basically both sides of the wall that they left, or is this where it said Marble Beach Speedway? But yeah, this place was relatively flat, but you can actually see what kind of banking it had. So we're looking at it. Um, it did have a little bit. this is probably closer to the original origins of the track than anything because Myrtle Beach was dirt at one point. Should we take it home? Little original Myrtle Beach asphalt. This shit was the most abrasive racing surface I think that I've ever driven on. Like I, I watch people ride around this place dead last for 100 and 30 laps and then the last 20 laps drive all the way back through the field and win the damn thing just because it was so hard on tires i also seen people drive from the back all the way to the front and think they were a hero and then with about 30 laps left they were right back dead last where they started because they had no idea what they were doing when it comes to saving tires so it's definitely a unique racetrack man there's a lot of big names that race here obviously if you guys have seen dale jr's and uh matthew Dillner's lost speedways at the end of season, I can't remember if it was season one or season two, but I think it was season two, but they come out here and uh, obviously the track was still together then, but very cool episode and Junior, there's a lot of history in that about the racetrack. So if you haven't watched that, make sure you do watch that, but I guess we can walk around it real quick and then we'll be done. If you're not familiar with Myrtle Beach Speedway, then uh, you wouldn't really know about the oddities of the track, but uh, if you ran it on iRacing, then you would know, even if you've never seen it in person. But this front stretch, you know, you come off of four and you're up to the wall and it had a weird dog leg right here in it. So you basically turned at the flag stand and got aimed to get down into turn one. And then once you get to turn one, there was a bunch of turtles on the inside of the racetrack that they had put in in the late 90s. And that kind of affected how you ran one and two as well. So very unique racetrack. Um, I feel like there's a lot of short tracks that have their different oddities and uniquenesses to them. But Myrtle Beach was definitely one that stood out from the rest just because of it being a half mile and having a dog leg in the middle of the front stretch. But also the way you ran it was, was unique. And there's a uh, airport right here beside it too. What's really sad about this place too is it was pretty much a catch-22 because the land around here, like if you're not familiar, there's a uh, an entire um, shopping mall outlet complex back there that's really popular. It's right here on the side of 501. And so real estate-wise, this is pretty much prime real estate in Myrtle Beach. And as the track progressed and as properties became more valuable, it was pretty much riding on the wall that this place was eventually going to have this fate and uh you know in 2020 when they were having all the negotiations it really there really couldn't even be an investment for the racetrack because you weren't getting anything out of it if you invest really the only way you were making money off of it even in the long run was if you were just to turn around and flip the the land for somebody to come in and you know put apartments or condominiums or whatever the hell they were going to put here on it and obviously the guy that owns the land is asking too much because it's still sitting here and nobody's doing anything with it right here is where we stood for the final race at myrtle beach i've got some footage of us standing over here too but this was the crossover gate came in here obviously there was a tunnel there as well
but uh, we stood right here. Couldn't beat it. One of the best seats in the house. Watch 30 late models go to battle. It's also really frustrating because this place was one of the more historical tracks in our short track, you know, book that we have in NASCAR as far as venues that are still operating that operated back in the 60s and 70s and kind of came all the way through the NASCAR boom and still made it. So to see a place like this go under is just, it's scary because we never know, you know, you just, you never know if you're going to lose your home track. I mean, if this happened to me at Hickory, it would be so devastating. I can't even like put it into words what it would do to me. Um, so I can only imagine the people that grew up racing here and then people my age even that raced here that grew up watching their parents race and things like that. To see it in this current state has to just be demoralizing. And um, So I, I really hope that stuff like this is a reminder for all of the fans, drivers, even people working in NASCAR that we cannot allow things like this to happen to our local tracks because it's the heart and soul of our industry and whenever things like this get to this point you know it's it's not a good trajectory so i really hope that we start to take an initiative to get back to our short tracks so that we don't end up in this situation again and you know hopefully moving forward we see life being breathed back into tracks all over the united states not just in the south because it's happening up north midwest and all that stuff too you know not only late model racing but it held Bush Grand National Racing up until the early 2000s, Hooters Pro Cup, Cup Racing. I don't know if the trucks ran here or not, but a lot of big names raced here. Like I said, a lot of history just going to the wayside. So there is a lot of uh, asphalt from the original surface still laying, but I just had an idea. And I think we're going to do it with one of these chunks. So. I'm gonna do a giveaway through this video for, let's do this this one right here, look, beauty. This piece of Myrtle Beach Speedway asphalt that was in turns one and two. And uh, we'll do a giveaway through this video. So if you're interested in this piece of Myrtle Beach asphalt, like this video, leave a comment down below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And then I will randomly pick one of you guys that will receive this uh, piece of uh, asphalt for free. So something cool we can do, especially since there's a lot of it laying here, and I know some of you guys would probably never ever get to see this facility, uh, let alone stand on it. So, and who knows if it's the, the track is even gonna be here this much longer. So uh, yeah, we'll do a giveaway, uh, original piece of Myrtle Beach asphalt. Leave a comment down below, like the video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and uh, I'll pick one of you guys that'll receive this. All right guys, that's gonna do it, like I said. Uh, if you're interested in this giveaway for the Myrtle Beach Asphalt, leave a like on this video, comment down below, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate you guys tuning in today, coming on this short miniature journey with me. I just wanted to stop by on our way back to North Carolina and, and visit her one more time just in case the, the actual track is no longer there at all anymore. So thanks again. I appreciate it. Hope you guys have a wonderful morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.